Kathy Getty, and I want to welcome you to California State Parks PORTS Home Learning Program. PORTS stands for Parks Online Resource for Teachers and Students. I'm a guide at the California State Railroad Museum located in Old Sacramento State Historic Park in Sacramento, California. But today we are not coming to you from a location inside the museum. We are coming to you from the Big Four building, which is located next door to the museum. And specifically today, we are in the Huntington Hopkins Hardware Store. The Big Four, as you might know, is for the Big Four of the Transcontinental Railroad. That would be Leland Stanford, Charles Crocker, Mark Hopkins, and C.P. Huntington. And as I said, the Huntington Hopkins Hardware Store is for Mark Hopkins and C.P. Huntington. It's a reconstructed building as it might have looked in the 1860s and 70s. It is open to the public, but the hours are limited. So if you're in the area and you want to take a tour, make sure you check our, our website before you come. And before we proceed, I do want to say that we acknowledge that Old Sacramento State Historic Park is located on the traditional homeland of the Miwok and Misenan people. These sovereign people were, were uh, caretakers of this land since time immemorial. We remember their continued connection to this region and we honor their elders and all the Misenan and Miwok people, both of the past and present. Well, this is April. And do you know what April is? April is Earth Month. And we are going to celebrate Earth Month today with something a little bit different than we've done before in ports. We are going to talk about, uh, we're going to have a game show. And the game show is going to be about the railroad industry and the environment, the positive and negative effects throughout history. As I said, we've developed a game show. Our game show is called Please, please tell me more. Now, we've modeled it after a game show on NPR called Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. So if you've, if you've seen, you can't see it, it's on the radio. If you've heard that show, you might recognize some of the games that we're going to play. But if you've never heard the show, don't worry about it because I'm going to explain everything as we go along. Now, you at home will be able to play along with us. We will have poll questions where you can record your answers. And what I want you to do right now is to find a pen. This is my gold spike pen. Uh, I want you to find a pen or a pencil, a crayon, something to write with, and a piece of paper because you're going to keep track of your points. And to help us with all of that, I have a panelist of some people that you might recognize if you have seen our ports programs before. That is Jay and Alex and Amanda. But today, they've taken on very different personalities to make up our celebrity panel. So I am going to have them introduce themselves to you right now. And I think that we will start with you, Alex, or Amanda. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Amanda, but in the business, they like to call me Paula Bunyan. I'm a lumberjack. Uh, I love chopping down trees. Uh, I love to win game shows, and I hate deforestation, because the less trees there are, the less there are for me to chop down. Uh, thanks for having me, Debbie. Thank you, Amanda. And now, Alex. Well, howdy. My name is Alex, and I'm the rootinest, tootinest cowboy in the wild, wild west. Great. Alex and uh, Jake, I wish I had sunglasses to shield me from the bling you've got there. It's all the money I have. That's why I can afford this. I'm the richest person in the West, which means I'm much better than all the rest. Ooh. I don't think this will be a very hard one to win. Oh, wow. Well, I think our celebrity panel is ready to go. And since they have personalities, I am taking on a personality of a conductor. I'm Debbie the conductor. Now, what does a conductor do on the railroad? They make sure that the train proceeds safely and and, and takes care of all the operations. And that's what I am going to do here with the game show. I'll be the conductor of our game show. So I have you ready panel? And I hope you're ready there at home. Let me explain to you what our first game is. 
Our first game is called Who Said It? And what we're going to do is you're going to hear a quote and then I'll give you some choices and then you have to figure out who said it. Okay, sound easy enough? Sure. And for you at home, you will keep track of your own points, my celebrity panelists. I think you have a pen and a paper there and at home, hopefully you have your writing implement with you right now and make sure to keep track of your points. We'll tally them up at the end. All right, we ready? The first question, who said it? Where there were a lot of buffalo the year before, there are now a lot of carcasses. Who said that? A, a disappointed restaurant patron who wanted to eat more buffalo wings and all he found were bones. Buffalo Bill, wouldn't be, or C, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Dodge, who was the commander of Fort Dodge, Kansas in the middle of Buffalo country. Who said it? Where there were a lot of buffalo the year before, there are now a lot of carcasses. We'll give everybody a few minutes to think about that. Record your answer. Panelists, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think we'll start again with Amanda. Amanda, what did you say? Uh, I chose B because it's in the name, Buffalo Bill, right? Okay, well, we'll see about that. And Alex? Well, I also chose B because Buffalo Bill is my dear friend. <laughs> uh, I went with C because I wanted to be a little bit different. Uh, see if I can get some extra points here. All right, C. Well, let's see what the correct answer is. It is actually C. Very good. And now this was based on, uh, as I said, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Dodge. And he was talking to some buffalo hunters and said, yeah, you can hunt buffalo if we had them, but the buffalo were all gone. Because at that time, when the Transcontinental Railroad moved through, it harmed the environment of the Native Americans who depended on the buffaloes for food and sustenance. Railroads booked trips where men shot and killed tens of millions of buffalo, nearly making them extinct. So if you got the letter C, and I think on our panel it was just Jake at this point, give yourself a point. Next question. I need one million ties in two years. They must be had. I will have them. Who said that? A your fashionable father who has a thing for wearing new ties. B, Thomas Durant, vice president of the Union Pacific Railroad while building the Transcontinental Railroad. Or C, Joe Biden, president of the United States. Who said, I need one million ties in two years. They must be had, I will have them. Okay, it looks like the celebrity panelists have their answers. I hope you have your answers at home. Uh, let's start with you, Alex. What answer did you come up with? Well, I chose B, Thomas Durant. Thomas Durant, okay. And Jake, what did you say? I got C, I was, was told if it ain't broke, don't fix it, all right? If you say so, that's what they say. All right, and Amanda, what do you say? Uh, I chose C. Sounds like an important guy. Joe Biden, President of the United States? Yeah. The President of the United what? States is an important person. Yes, <laughs> you are correct on that. However, you are not correct on the answer to this question. Um, Alex, you were correct with E. Thomas Durant, Vice President of the Union Pacific Railroad. Building the Transcontinental Railroad required a lot of wood, which meant, as our friend here, Amanda knows, chopping down a lot of trees. But this harmed the environment because it required cutting down so many trees. And of course, we are talking about railroad ties, not ties, not a bow tie like what you're wearing. Railroad ties are made out of wood and they take a lot of wood because they have to be replaced so often. And think of all the railroad tracks in the country with all those railroad ties. So, that was the, but, but you can see just how much they needed if Thomas Durant needed a million in two years. So very good. Give yourself a point. 
if you chose letter B. And now for our third who said it question. This is the third question, the last question of this round. Every train rolls on through dismal smoke and barbarous melancholy ruins. Whoa. Okay, who said that? A, John Muir, naturalist and conservationist. B, Paul Bunyan, fictitious giant lumberjack. Or C, Joe Biden, president of the United States. Who was commenting on the terrible scenery being full of dismal smoke and melancholy ruins? I'll give everybody a chance to come up with an answer there. And it looks like our celebrity panelists have come up with an answer. Uh, Jake, let's start with you. What say you? Well, with B, we have a lumberjack on the panel, so I think this might be a conflict of interest, but uh, I went with B. How dare you stereotype me like that? <laughs> B, Paul Bunyan. Goodness, well, what did our lumberjack say? Well, I chose A through process of elimination because last time I chose Joe Biden, it was wrong. And I know Paul Bunyan and I don't remember him ever saying that. So I chose A. Okay. A and Alex, what did Alex say? Well, I also said B because not no offense to Lumberjacks, but Paul Bunyan, you can't go wrong. He's <laughs> Unfortunately, you did. <laughs> Sorry, but if you answered A, John Muir, you were correct on this question. A, John Muir. Now, a lot of us might know who John Muir is. As I said, naturalist and conservationist. He devoted his life to protecting the environment. And when he witnessed the destruction of the forests and from the railroads, he commented that the trains brought visitors to the smoke and dust and ashes route. So... If you chose the letter A, give yourself a point. And for you at home, give yourself a point. That brings us to the end of round one, where you had three possible points to win there. So, very good. Are you getting the hang of the gang here? The game, gang? I think so. <laughs> All right, I think you are. Um, some of you are a little testy, but we'll see how things go as we move along. Round two. Now, this is a game called Don't Believe Everything You Read. And our panelists here are going to read three stories. Two are not real, they're made up. But the third is factual and taken from an actual news source. So listen carefully to Alex, Jake, and Amanda as they read their stories. And you in the audience, you will need to decide which person on our panel is telling the truth? Okay, let's start with you, Amanda. All right. Or Paula. <laughs> so my uh, article is called New York to London by Train. A budding railroad entrepreneur announced plans to build a new above ground transatlantic rail line connecting New York City in the United States to London, England. This new line would take approximately 15 years and $200 trillion to plan and construct. Uh, it is expected to transport millions of tons of freight a year, invigorate the US and British economies, and provide a specialized tourism method for wealthy Europeans. Think about it, the spokesperson said. What is the apex of rail travel? We have conquered mountains, plains, and rivers, so why not the ocean? Who hasn't dreamt of crossing the ocean in a train? Think of the beautiful sunsets, the views, and the profits. Environmentalists denounced the proposal, claiming the transatlantic railway would dump ridiculous amounts of diesel and oil into the ocean. They claimed such a measure would drive thousands of species to extinction. The proposition has gone viral. Billionaire Jeff Bezos commented on the proposal on his Twitter account. Consider me first in line. I'm surprised I didn't think of this. Okay, the first story is New York to London by train. Okay. So for our second story, Alex. Introducing the Carbon Catcher Locomotive. In a recent announcement from Elon Musk, 
Tesla has been developing a new zero emissions locomotive engine. Not only does it release zero emissions into the atmosphere, it consumes the emissions released by other polluters, such as diesel trains and cars. Titled the Carbon Catcher, this technology could be a crucial tool in cutting emissions and the aid in the fight against climate change. Very good. Okay, that is introducing the Carbon Catcher locomotive. And for the last story here, we will introduce Jake. Uh, this one is called Train Robbers, Bad for the Environment. On September 5th, 1911, five train robbers held up a southbound Oregon Express train. They blew open the safes, and at the sound of the explosions, the train slowed down. While the three men in the express car were busy robbing the safes, there were two others on the outside, one on each side of the trains, and they fired about a dozen shots in the air and warned passengers to keep their heads inside the coaches. The train's conductor fired two shots, which did no damage to the robbers. In fact, it didn't even seem to alarm them. Just after the safes were blown open, the bandits took off towards the mountains, and within 40 minutes, a forest fire started in the direction they took. They set the fire to distract from the search and to obliterate the trail they took. The editors at the Sacramento Union newspaper reported that the train robbers used a copy of what else but the Sacramento Union to start the blaze. Okay, well, there are our stories. Um, they all sound like they are very believable stories. Okay, who do you think is telling the truth? Is it Alex, who talked about New York to London by train? Or, no, I, I don't know why I always do that. I do this with my kids too. I get their names mixed up. Animals, <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> And then Alex, Alex, <laughs> introducing the carbon catcher locomotive. That's why I wanted name tags, you guys. Um, and third is Jake, New York, oh wait, uh, train robbers, bad for the environment. And if you can understand what I just said to you, you're doing very well. <laughs> okay, we'll give you a few minutes to come up with the right answer or who you think is the real, the real story. Hmm, which one do we think? Okay. Well, you've given a few minutes there. Will the real story please? Hey, you guys, pay attention. <laughs> I'm the conductor here. Will the real story please identify yourself? It is me. Who else? <gasps> Who else? Who else indeed? Ah, so train robbers are bad for the environment? So they say. Oh, because they burn down the forest to cover up their tracks. But they got money, so I don't really see. It seems to be a pretty good trade off for the robbers. Oh, uh, no, we don't root for train robbers here. Sorry. I'm getting real sick of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Throw him out. <laughs> I think you, you need to keep that axe away from me. Yeah, you better watch yourself. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> settle down, settle down. You both had, you all had really good answers. And maybe someday we'll see taking a train to London from New York over the ocean. Very good. Give yourself a point if you guessed Jake. All right. Now we're going to move on to round three. This is called the Fill in the Limerick Challenge. Now for this game, I will read a limerick, which is a type of poem. And the last word is going to be left blank. So listen to the poem, remember the rhyming words and make your guess. Now, I'm just gonna give you an example so that you all can uh, see what I'm talking about. This is a limerick called the old man with a beard. There once was an old man with a beard who said it is just as I feared. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren have all built their nests in my blank. So you want to rhyme beard and feared. Do you have any ideas? Just say it out loud what you think that word would be. Is it beard again? It's beard again, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there once was an old man with a beard who said, it's just as I feared. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren have all built their nests in my beard. So you kind of see how it works out. You've got the first two rhyming words and then the last 
sentence rhymes with that. But I'll, I'll tell you what the rhyming words are. Um, are you ready? Awesome. OK. Well, let's get started. First limerick. So many cities are pained by traffic, a healthy world's bane. Go for a walk, a run, or a trot, and get to work on a blank. So many cities are pained by traffic, a healthy word's bane. So we want to rhyme those two words. Go for a walk, a run, or a trot, and get to work on a blank. I see you are furiously writing your answers there. OK. Are we ready? You want to turn them all around at the same time? Yeah, let's do that. What did you say? Train. 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 Oh, you all got the, the correct answer. The answer is train. So many cities are pained by traffic, a healthy word's bane, world's bane. Go for a walk, a run, or a trot, and get to work on a train, of course. Very good, panelists. I'm really proud of you. You all got the correct answer. So give yourselves a point there. All right, our next limerick, ready. There was once a locomotive named Meyer. When traveling west, he never tired. His smokestack design kept hot cinders in line for if released, they could cause a great blank. We wanna rhyme Meyer and tired. I'll read that again. There once was a locomotive named Meyer. When traveling west, he never tired. His smokestack design kept hot cinders in line, for if released, they could cause a great blank. What do you think that is, panelists? OK. I said we were rhyming with mire and tired. So what did you say? You want to turn them all at once? OK, one, two, three, go. Fire, fire, choir. Fire. 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 People might want to sing. I don't know. You don't like singing? They could cause a great choir? They could. People want to congregate around it, sing some songs. Maybe that helps. I don't know. Well, you've got a good rhyming word, um, so uh, that's good. Unfortunately, you don't get a point for that, but I really, really like how hard you tried with that, Jake. I'm just gonna read it with the word. There once was a locomotive named Meyer. When traveling west, he never tired. His smokestack design kept hot cinders in line for if released, they could cause a great fire. Yes, when you're burning wood and the sparks are there, they caused a number of forest fires. So very good. If you got that answer correct, give yourself a point. One more limerick here. This is our last limerick. A curious young fellow named Coop couldn't stop the urge to snoop. He looked under the train where the toilets undrained to see tracks that were covered in blank. So you want to rhyme coop and snoop. A curious young fellow named Coop couldn't stop the urge to snoop. He looked under the train where the toilets undrained to see tracks that were covered in blank. Okay, are you ready to reveal your answers? One, two, three. Okay. Poop. Can you say that word on TV? I, I, I hate to say it, but it, it, yes, we can say it on TV. My the answer is poop. Poop. If we're allowed to say it on TV, I think we have a. Then a, we're okay to say it. In a song. In a, a poop song? A poop song. I think we have a poop song. I think we have a DJ back there that can. Uh, well, let me just say what, why this was the right answer. Because believe it or not, on uh, heavily traveled train routes, when the train stopped, 
they would dump the toilet remains of human excrement or poop, as we say, flushed by countless toilet trains directly onto the tracks. That's really bad for the environment. So yes, the answer is that. And if we have to play a song about poop, go ahead. All passengers will please refrain from flushing toilets while the train is in the station, darling, I love you. We encourage constipation while the train is in the station. Moonlight always makes me think of you. If you wish to pass some water, kindly call the Pullman Potter. You'll place a vessel in the vestibule. If the porter isn't here, try the platform in the rear. The one in front is likely to be cool. If the woman's room be taken, never feel the least forsaken. Never show a sign of sad defeat. Try the men's room across the hall. And if some man has had the call, he'll courteously relinquish you his seat. If these efforts all are vain, then simply break a window pane. This novel method's used by very few. We go strolling through the park, goosing statues in the dark. If Sherman's horse can take it, why can't you? That was my poop song. Wow. Well, I never thought I would see it, but we did have a pretty catchy song about poop. And uh, I guess it got some energy out. <laughs> All right, good job. Next, our final round, round four, true or false. That's pretty self-explanatory. You all know what true or false means. I will read a statement. You will decide whether it is true or false. Okay, ready? In the late 1800s, the famous conservationist that we heard about before, John Muir, partnered with the Southern Pacific Railroad to create and preserve the Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. So in the previous question, we learned that he didn't really like the railroads, right? So now you have to determine if this is true or false. In the late 1800s, did the famous conservationist John Muir partner with the railroad, with Southern Pacific Railroad, to create and preserve the Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. Am I fooling you or am I telling you the truth? Okay, let's start with you, Amanda. There you go. I said false seems a little out of character. Why would you pair up with someone you hate like that? I don't know. Okay, what did you say, Alex? I also said false. I mean, he hated the railroad, right? And Jake? Uh, I also said false. I don't understand why you would be saving. You want to make some money, right? Okay, we're going to move on from that quick. <laughs> um, well, you all said false. And I can see the reasoning for that, but the answer is actually true. Even though the Southern Pacific built railroads, they recognized the need to preserve the scenic beauty of the land. Otherwise, there wasn't going to be anything beautiful for to sell tickets for tourists to see. So John Muir believed this too, and the two very unlikely partners joined together for the benefit of the environment. So that was true. No one here you don't get any points for that. But at home, if you got that one correct, give yourself a point. Number two, the Sierra Northern Railroad received $4 million in funding to test a new locomotive that will use hydrogen fuel cell technology to reduce air pollutants and greenhouse gas emissions. Is that true or false that the Southern Knit Railroad Sub Sierra Northern Railway received $4 million in funding to test a new locomotive that would use hydrogen fuel cell technology to reduce air pollutants. What did you say? Uh, I said true, because that's a lot of big words. And I feel like if they use a lot of big words, it's probably true. Okay, good reasoning there. Alex? 
I also said true because I would like to believe it's true. <laughs> and Jake? I also said true because hydrogen seems like a good way to get fuel. So. Well, you are all correct this time. Yeah. Give yourselves a point, panel. Yes, this is true that this money was awarded by the California Energy Commission to retire the locomotives that, uh, that had the pollutants and replace them with zero emission switching locomotives using the advanced hydrogen technology. Very good. Okay, question three. In 2013, the Union Pacific Railroad started replacing railroad ties made of wood with concrete ones. We were talking earlier about how much wood it takes for railroad ties. So are they, are they replacing the wooden ties with concrete ties? What do you think? True or false? You're really thinking hard on this one, I can see. I'm really proud of you for that. That's great. Well, we don't have all the time in the world, so write your answers down. <laughs> Okay, 2013, Union Pacific Railroad started replacing railroad ties made of wood with concrete ones. What do you say, Amanda? Uh, false, because I use wood all the time and it does a good job. Why would you replace it? Good reasoning. Alex? Uh, I said true. Because you did. Because I did okay. and it feels right. Mm -hmm. Jake? Uh, I said false. Uh, I'm not sure if concrete's better than wood. The environment. Oh, okay. Well, um, let's see if we can answer that question. Actually, the only person that got that correct is Alex because it is true. And to answer your questions about using the wood, as I said, railroad ties are the things that use the most amount of wood. So the uh, concrete ties actually improve railroad safety by reducing derailments in areas where they've been installed. They actually started doing this since the 1970s. So the Union Pacific is doing that here. So they're saving a lot of trees by, by doing that. That's a good call. All right, here's the next question. There's a big difference between diesel trains and electric trains. True or false? Mm. Diesel trains or electric trains? There's a big difference between them for the environment. You were pretty quick on that one. What say you? I said true because they're different kinds of trains. Yeah, sound good? True, true all the way? Yeah, they are. They are different kinds of trains, diesel trains. Um, emit more carbon than electric trains. Electric trains are environmentally friendly because they are powered by renewable energy and offer carbon-free journeys. So if you have the chance to take an electric train, um, then that would be a good choice. So very good. All right, how are we doing here, everybody? Did you give yourself a point for that? Absolutely. All right, keep track of your points and I'm watching you, no cheating allowed. Here's the next question. Throughout the late 19th and earliest, early 20th centuries, sparks from locomotives caused devastating forest fires, which we learned about in our limerick, right? Um, making all locomotives bad for the environment. True or false? All locomotives are bad for the environment because sparks from their locomotives cause devastating forest fires. Okay, what did you say? True, you all said true. No, I'm sorry. That's sorry, it is false, yeah. All locomotives, no, all locomotives are not bad for the environment. In fact, in the 19th and 20th centuries, um, Southern Pacific developed a firefighting locomotive that could prevent and put out fires. They could shoot powerful streams of water to forest fires and also water down the wooden uh, snow sheds so that they didn't catch fire. So that would be a very good application of a locomotive. So not all locomotives were bad for the environment. Next question. Ready for this? 
only 9% of Americans take some form of train to work, including subways, commuter rail, and trolleys. 85% take personal transportation vehicles like cars. So does that sound right to you? That only 9% of Americans take some kind of a train to work where more people, 85%, take their cars. Is that true or false? Okay, what say you all? True. True. You all get a point for that. True is the correct answer. True, yeah. Kind of a sad statistic though, wouldn't you say? 9% is not very great. And uh, we can see that a majority of people take their own cars to work. So if possible, try and take a train. In 2018, next question. In 2018, a historic railroad in Colorado sparked one of the largest wildfires in Colorado history. Fire investigators concluded that hot cinders, there we go with the hot cinders again, started the 54,000 acre wildfire. That, is that still happening, you think? In 2018, not th that's just a few years ago. This was an historic railroad in Colorado. It sparked one of the largest wildfires in Colorado history which was a 54,000 acre wildfire. Okay, turn them all at once, what did you say? True, yeah, it is true, yes. Sparks from the locomotives from the historic Durango and Silverton narrow gauge caused one of Colorado's largest fires. So give yourself a point if you got the correct answer for that. And here comes our last question. So make it a good one, all right? As of 2019, the transportation sector is the largest creator of carbon emissions. 58% of those emissions are from light duty vehicles like cars, but only 2% are from rail. So we've got a lot of statistics there, but these are recent statistics showing what it's what transportation, transportation is the largest creator of carbon emissions. But most of those emissions, 58% are from light duty vehicles like cars, where only 2% are from rail. Is that true or false? Think about all the things that we've been learning about today. Okay, all right, what do you think? Oh, it's true. The answer is true. Good job, Yay. panelists. Good job, yes. Give yourselves a point for that. Cars emit the greatest amount of emissions in the air. Well, those are all the questions that we have. And now comes the exciting part. How many points? So tally up your points here, panelists. And you at home, tally up your points. How many did you get? Ready? Everybody tallied their points? Okay. You know, I always start with you, Amanda. I'm going to start with you, Jake. How many points did you get? Uh, I got lucky number seven. Seven points. Okay. And Alex? I got eight points. Eight points. And Amanda? I also got eight points. Ooh, a tie. A tie. Well, you know what? Good game. Good game. Good game. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. All right. Well, nobody got all of them correct. There were 15 possible points. And if you got 15 points, then you are a gold spike. We don't have any gold spikes here today, but maybe there are some out there at home. If you got 16 to 11, and it looks like y'all missed that by a little bit, you would be a silver spike, a silver spike for 16 to 11. But 11 or less, you are spikes made of iron, which is what all spikes, well, iron spikes hold all the railroads in the country together. So an iron spike is a good, strong showing. So 
work. I, it's nice that you were congratulating each other. Congratulations to our celebrity panel for a game well played. Thank you. And thank you to all of, us, all of you for playing along with us today. We hope you learned that while the railroads have had a negative effect on the environment over the years, they also work toward fixing some of those bad effects. Today, rail transport is the most environmentally friendly way to travel. It uses 80% less greenhouse gas than cars. The only methods more environmentally friendly than trains are walking and cycling. Railroads have answered the call to action by researching ways to make trains emit less pollution. You can answer the call to action by taking trains or other mass transit whenever possible instead of driving an automobile. While that's one way to help the environment, maybe you can think of other ways too. It's something we all need to think about. So I thank you, panel. Do you, any parting words from my celebrity panelists here? I want to recount. I'm just <laughs> glad I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, a recount. <laughs> That's up to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for playing the game today, celebrity panel, and thank you to all of you at home for joining us. I hope you had fun playing. Please, please tell me more and tune in to our ports program next month in May, where we'll have a different kind of program to enjoy. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. <laughs>